morning and welcome to Chicago Union Station. To celebrate my birthday, I'm taking the train you see advertised right here, the Borealis, Amtrak's newest service between the Windy City and the Twin Cities. I will only be going as far as Wisconsin Dells and spending a couple days at the legendary Kalahari Resort. Borealis is over two months old now, and it's such a big deal for reasons I will discuss later in this video. Right now it's 1030 and we all proceed to the boarding line with a half hour till scheduled departure. It wasn't long until we were met with this announcement. This announcement is for the customers ticketed on train 1333 Borealis. At this time, Amtrak announces there will be a delay in the boarding of your train. Amtrak does apologize for the inconvenience of this delay. We do suggest you remain in the North Boarding area and listen for further announcements. Today's train consist includes two P-42 locomotives, one at each end. Sandwiched in between are five Horizon cars. The first Horizon is a combined cafe business class car, and the rest are just regular coaches. Both P-42s in this consist are no ordinary locomotives. Our head up front is newly painted in Phase 7, and the trailer in the rear is in Pepsi can livery for Amtrak's 50th anniversary. Once on board, it's open seating, where you can choose your seat in whatever car you want. Before departure, let me show you what's provided with the Horizon coach seat. The folding tray is not as big as its counterpart in a venture car. And this one actually extends all the way out to my abdomen. Could make a good restraint, I guess. Below the tray is a pocket and safety instructions card. The recline on these seats is nice, much better than venture seats that don't really recline at all. There's also overhead reading lights. As well as a power outlet below the window and the seats are decently comfortable. We are at 1333, we have the final destination of Minnesota City Hall, making stops at the landing, starting at General Mitchell National Airport, downtown Milwaukee Airport Station, Columbus, Murray, Wisconsin Dells, Toma, La Crosse, Winona, Minnesota, Red Wing, and Minnesota City Hall. As stated just a moment ago, safety is always our top priority here at Amtrak, very city. And the seat back in front of you on the seat itself is our safety for sure. Just driving the type of rail car you are riding in today. Please take a moment to kind of run on safety for sure. And you might as well for the emergency exit of the car you're riding in. Also, your safety shoes are required at all times on this train. There are points on this train you've been very badly pinched. We do not want you to be very badly pinched. Please wear your shoes at all times on the train. The children on the age of 16 must be accompanied by an adult.
it's not long until we've crossed into Wisconsin. The train made two more stops in Sturdivant and General Mitchell Airport, with Milwaukee Intermodal Station next in the schedule. The inaugural run of the Borealis was on May 21, 2024. Since then, a daily average of about 300 passengers hopped on board. The first 10 days of service saw a total ridership of over 3,000 in each direction. After a full month, ridership topped 18,500. This number clearly shows how big of a deal the Borealis is. Because of that, the powers that be are already considering a second daily round trip. This would result in three daily departures per direction, if you also count the Empire Builder.
used to a late departure for mechanical reasons out of Chicago. Once again, at this time, we are running exactly an hour and 30 minutes behind schedule. So whatever your original arrival time was when you purchased your ticket, whether it was online or in person, whatever the time it says on your ticket, push it back an hour and 30 minutes. Once again, as of now, we are an hour and 30 minutes behind schedule. Whatever the original scheduled arrival time was for your station stop, push it back an hour and 30 minutes. Thank you, welcome aboard. Once again, that scheduled station stop is Columbus. And conductors will make announcements before every scheduled station stop and give you directions on where to exit. All right, time for a little more history talk. Back in the 70s, Amtrak operated the Twin Cities Hiawatha between Chicago and the Twin Cities. That route became the North Star in 1978 with extended service to Duluth, Minnesota. The North Star operated for seven years but was discontinued in 1985. And for the next 39 years, the Empire Builder was the only train linking Chicago and the Twin Cities. But as of two months ago, the Twin Cities Hiawatha route has been revived under a new name. The Borealis. With this, passengers can now enjoy two daily train options between the Windy City and the Twin Cities, with a potential third in consideration. During the 2024 revival plan, Amtrak would initially call this service the Great River, but I like the name Borealis better. Now, you've probably heard of the Northern Lights, which are called Aurora Borealis. They were given that name in the early 17th century by astronomer and scientist Galileo Galilei. Aurora was the Roman goddess of dawn, and Boreas was the Greek name for the north wind. Galilei thought an aurora was caused by the sunlight reflected from the atmosphere, and it makes sense that this route is named the Borealis, since it goes up north. So I was wondering, why doesn't the Borealis use SC44 chargers or venture cars? Well, those Siemens products are state funded, not Amtrak funded. The Borealis is also state funded, with support from the Illinois, Wisconsin, and Minnesota Departments of Transportation. Currently, the chargers and ventures are not funded by Minnesota, and MnDOT opted not to share costs with Siemens. So in the meantime, the Borealis will use Amtrak-owned P-42, Horizon, and Amfleet rolling stock. I mean, Siemens Venture is my favorite Amtrak coach fleet, but after riding in plenty of them, it felt nice to be back in an old Horizon car. It's not that evident on camera, but there's a leakage in one of the coach cars.
three of the front row seats also don't have their cushions. Looks like they blocked it off. Now I'm going to review both restrooms, starting with the handicapped. In addition to the classic lock switch, you can push in this silver knob to lock the door. The faucet is meh, but better than its predecessor. There's also a button-operated hand dryer. On this one, you can push to stop. And now for the vacuum toilet with its notoriously loud flush. Let's check out the other bathroom, about half the size of the handicapped. The toilet produces the same flush. The faucet is no different, but the hand dryer has a white finish. We made another stop in Portage, Wisconsin, just less than 20 minutes outside the Dells. Soon enough, it's almost time to leave the train. A generous thank you to my dad 
for providing this footage of my arrival. Thank you so much. Welcome. Here goes 1333 in the pouring rain off to Toma, La Crosse, Winona, Red Wing, and St. Paul. <laughs> 